Hello, everyone. Okay, it says we're live, but I'm gonna make sure. Hi. Last time you can see us, you can hear us, all of that. So I have my library copy. Oops, it was almost upside down. <laughs> okay. I'm assuming everyone can hear us, and I see that we are live. So let's go ahead. Hi. Welcome to the July Festival Club Live Show. Like we all showed you, we are going to be discussing the Echo Wise by Sarah Gailey. And before we run into discussing this, I'm going to go ahead and quickly announce this month's book and then September's book. So this month we are reading Stranger Dreamer, which is a fantasy. And we're following our main character, Lazlo Strange, who is like super, super obsessed with this lost mythic city called Weep. And we're following him as he's kind of like discovering what happened to that city and everything that has to do with it. In September, we are reading Ace of Spades, which is a YA thriller that follows our two main characters, Chiamaka and Devon, who are being blackmailed by this like gossiper called Aces, and they have to band together and figure out who Aces is and protect themselves and other students. So those are the two books we are reading this month and next month. And then I'm going to be announcing the rest of the year on the book club Instagram, probably at the end of the month. So go ahead and follow that. It'll be in the description down below. But now that I've done that whole like spiel and everyone's like, wait, wait, let me write that down. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and let our co-hosts introduce themselves. Blake should be on his way. So whenever you get to it, just join us. And they're also going to tell you what a recent favorite they've read is and then you can probably check that out and also while they're doing that and looking for all their you know things and thoughts go ahead and leave a black heart in the comments if you read the book and leave maybe a blue one if you haven't just so i can see how many people have finished the book so we'll give them time so i'll load up all the parts <laughs> you guys are like wait Wait. <laughs> I think I, I think I know. Okay, hi, I'm Kayla. I'm from um, Books and Lala. That's my channel. Um, my most recent favorites are actually The Echo Wife, to spoil my uh, opinion on that. And Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Book by Eric LaRocca. Um, these are the only like four and a half, five stars that I gave in the last like six weeks i think so i just have to mm -hmm. include both of those i've found i've always had a love for short books but like this is just all i all i'm loving recently is the shorter the better mm -hmm. hi everyone i'm noelle noelle gallagher that's my channel's name <laughs> and um i well as Kayla said, we'll talk more about this, but I had a lot of fun with this book. My, you know, I don't read sci-fi that often, so it was really fun for me to dive into this. Um, mm. And then recently I really enjoyed A Thousand Ships, which mm. kind of follows a bunch of different women through the Trojan War. Gets like each mm. chapter gets a new woman's perspective. And it's, it's a lot of people actually, which was surprising. And the audiobook was really great. So that's a, that's a book I've loved recently. I would definitely be checking that out because I love stories that follow different people. It's mm -hmm. really interesting. Love that. Um, hopefully you guys know who I am, but I'm Chanel. You're on my channel. <laughs> and a recent favorite of mine, which was like so shocking, is Jade City by Fonda Lee. I am honestly so shocked because I don't typically like fantasy that much. But as soon as I started reading this, I was like, wait, wait. <laughs> The elements are just clicking. So yeah, that's a favorite. So if you haven't read it yet, it follows this family. They're like in a clan and they are trying to protect their city from a different clan. And it's a lot. It's a lot. I am not the best at explaining fantasy. So just read it. Just trust me and read it. Hopefully one day I'll have some coherent thoughts. But yeah, that's a recent favorite of mine. <laughs> Oh my god, do I even talk about this? this book? <laughs> anyway, let's go into talking about the Echo Wife. Um, I see, before we go into that, so many black hearts. I'm really happy because I heard about this book and then I heard nobody say anything. So I got really concerned. I was like, wait, 
what happened to the original script? Why are you guys suddenly quiet? <laughs> I was like, um, what? Anyway, so I'm glad that a lot of people have read it. I see a few blue hearts, so you guys will be good for the first few questions. I'll let you know when we're going into spoilers. But I'm going to go ahead and give a quick little summary for anyone who hasn't read the book so you can decide if you want to read it. This book follows our main character, Evelyn, who is a scientist, and she just has won like, an award for her research. And she finds out, well, in the past, she found out that her husband created a clone of her, and he basically is now with the clone. And at the beginning of the book, we find out that her husband has been killed, and Evelyn and the clone have to kind of work together to figure out what happened and to figure out how to solve what happened and it is definitely a wild ride if you love sci-fi or if you love anything that's like about clones i would definitely pick up this book oddly enough i don't know if anyone's read um house of the scorpion i think by nancy farmer it's like a super old book i read that when i was like in middle school and it's still one of my all-time favorite books but i mean don't judge me on that if you read it now and it's trash <laughs> i was literally 12 <laughs> Do it, do it that way, you will. Anyways, this was a pretty good book. So just for what I thought, but there we go. When summer is over, so go read it. <laughs> anyway, let's go into our ratings. After that mishmash of a summary that was very all over the place, just like this book. I guess I already spoiled my thoughts on it. I gave it a bit <laughs> four and a half stars. Um, I this is just very much my type of book I feel like mm -hmm. the questions that will come up um will answer why I feel that is so I don't want to get into it too much now but uh yeah I loved it I loved it so much I'm going to read every Sarah Gailey that comes out it's just like mm -hmm. it's fantastic <laughs> well you know it's hard because I've never, I don't read sci-fi that often. So I was like, am I just blown away because it, I'm like enjoying sci-fi for one of the first times and I just think it's so fantastic. But I really, really liked it. I really liked the balance of talking about science and like the cloning process mm -hmm. with like marital problems and like mm -hmm. talking about obviously like the betrayal and the anger mm -hmm. and the resentment between the couples, not only the main characters couples, but even mm -hmm. the main characters parents parents um so i really liked the discussion around marriage and sci-fi and how it was thrilling but also scientific and i just thought it was so good is this her first book no no they've written i want to say like five or six other things okay got it so i thought yeah. it was great i thought yeah, you were so good. Oh my Sorry, when you said that you don't read sci-fi very often, I was I was ready for you to give it such a low rating, and I'm so shocked now. No, I thought you were going to be like, I don't read sci-fi, so maybe it's like good, but I just don't know it one star. <laughs> I thought maybe since I don't ever read it, maybe it's like better. Yeah. I'm thinking that it's better than anything, but I actually I mm -hmm. thought it was so good, and I was just quick to the point. I didn't think there was too much filler information that like distracted mm -hmm. you from the story. I felt like every chapter added to the overall effect at the end, so I thought it was great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for my turn, I don't actually, I haven't read the book yet. And here's why, because I felt like this book in a lot of ways was really ridiculous. I was like, what, what is even happening? Like, what are we doing right now? And then some of the explanations of things of like, I was so curious, I texted one of my friends who was a scientist and I was like, have you read this book? <laughs> I'm like, I want to know what you think about this book. And then, so even though I was like, wait, there's a lot of things that are unresolved, which we'll go into later. On the other flip side, I really had a fun time reading it. Like there was just so much that was happening that I was like, I kind of love it here, but also what's going on? So I don't know. But overall, if I was to be asked, what did I think about the book is my experience? I would say I enjoyed it and I thought it was interesting. So maybe I'll have a rating at the end of this live show. So we'll see. <laughs> let's see. Uh, let's see what people are going to Oh, for I saw someone ask where Blake was. I'm not too sure where he is, but whenever he gets here, he'll hop on the live and join us. Um, there's a lot of five stars and four stars. I did see one. I'm so sorry. 
I am so sorry. It's funny. I thought this book was going to be like a one to two stars because I didn't realize that this was the same author that I had just seen up one of their other books earlier this year. So I didn't even know it was the same author until I went into Libby and saw that book and I was like, oh, wait. <laughs> so I did be surprised. Okay, someone gave me a seven on the call. I've heard of this rating system, so that's cool. But yeah, it overall seemed like, oops, like a lot of people enjoyed the book. Very few people did it, so that's good to see. If you haven't read the book yet, this might be a time for you to disappear and decide if you want to read it or not, because we're going to get into spoilers. Um, I got my stickers. Oh, yeah, I can see that. That's not a book I enjoyed, but I can see that. Hmm. Okay. Ah, uh, it does. Both of you guys always have really good hair, so we love to see it. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get into talking about the Echo Wife. And my first question is, what did you guys think about Evelyn's character? I love her. Um, I I love being in the head of an unlikable character. Um, mm -hmm. So this was just very much up my alley. I don't like need to feel connected to a character for like a book or understand their motivations or um I, I just like i don't care about things like that when i'm reading a book like this so mm -hmm. i thought she was just like very cold and analytical and i thought that really accomplished what the book set out to do so i loved mm -hmm. her as a character it was obviously like really exhausting to be inside her head um mm -hmm. the book is a lot of like exposition as opposed to action um and i like that i like when people are just describing their feelings and their thoughts for pages and pages and pages so mm -hmm. i loved her for her intent as a character mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i thought that was beautiful i thought what you just said was perfect so <laughs> <laughs> um because that's a lot of how i feel about her i thought that she mm -hmm. Um, how she was written per per was perfect for the role she was in and the position she was in. I feel like she was very analytical, just like Kayla said. And I thought that um, she would kind of admit to the reader her poorer thoughts, like the I maybe the ideas of hers that weren't as great as they should have been. Or, um, you know, sh we just got to see you know, the more devious thoughts and then she would try to correct them and then she would still own up to them and she was unapologetically, unapologetically herself sometimes. And I, I just thought that, you know, you know, she fit the scientist in my head that I thought she should be. So I mm -hmm. thought she was really fun to read. Mm -hmm. I felt like at first I was like, okay, she's interesting. What's happening? You know, like when we opened with the award scene, I was like, okay, I'm curious to see how things will blow up. And then nothing happened. And I was like, wait, girl, I thought you were going to throw some hands, but OK. And as we were like, reading the book, I definitely didn't like Evelyn as a person, but I always try to appreciate unlikable characters in books, especially when they're women, especially when they're women in spaces where women aren't typically in. You know, like she's a scientist. She's in the STEM world, which is a world that's like largely dominated by men. So I definitely, after reading the book, was like, you know what? I really appreciate her character, especially when it came to she was in the past talking about that one guy she went on a date with. And then she got Nathan's phone number. Like at the very beginning, there was a coworker she went on a date with. And then Nathan was like randomly there. And he was like, well, you're on a date. And she's like, no, I'm not. <laughs> and that was just so funny the way she suddenly was like, you're such a great coworker. And then that was it. And I just thought her character and her experiences were so interesting, especially in relation to her parents. Like that was so interesting to read about. So yeah, overall, I think I appreciate how unlikable she was because the point of an unlikable character is you're not supposed to like them, you know, so. Yeah, it definitely was. Ooh, a lot of people are agreeing with you. 
I think my favorite thing about this, the book, or just like divisive books in general, is that like we often agree about the same things. It's just if you like that thing or not. So like yeah. if the people who hate this book, I completely understand because they're listing all of these things that they don't like in books. And I just love those things. So it's not yeah. that we interpreted the book differently. It's just mm -hmm. how we enjoy it differently. Yeah, I was actually buddy reading this with my friend and she like rated it one star. <laughs> and I was like, well, I'm not sure what I think about my rating because I agreed with her on so many aspects. I was like, this is so ridiculous. Emily just rambles all day. Like, what is she even talking about? This whole side plot with her assistant. I was like, what was that? <laughs> but at the end of the day, I was like, but I also am very interested because one of my favorite authors is Gillian Flynn. Because she writes so many unlikable characters, you could literally be like, I can't stand this person. But you're like, five stars. Five stars amazing. <laughs> So when I was reading this, I was thinking about that, and I definitely agree. This is a book where if someone told me I hated it, I'd be like, okay, cool, makes sense. But if they're like, I loved it, I'm like, cool, makes sense. So, yeah. So she yeah, she definitely did that. And a lot of things were definitely her fault, which we'll get into later on. So. Yeah. Okay. What did you guys think about this? Because that's one of my questions to like Nathan's character and their marriage. What did you guys think about that? Like the whole interactions between the two of them and then how their relationship went. I think I read this book so long ago now that it's funny the things that stick with you and don't. Um, I would say Nathan is really easily the most like forgettable part of the book. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really even like remember a lot about the things that he did and the ways mm -hmm. that he behaved. Um, and I do think that comment is great because it's, mm -hmm. you got to view him through other mm -hmm. people um, and how other people perceived him. So he's not really a strong character in my mind like a month later um, mm -hmm. at all. I think um, with Nathan, it was interesting watching exactly what Kayla just said, like watching him through other people's eyes, because um, with Evelyn's relationship with her, with him, I thought it was interesting that she would always kind of ground herself with like admitting that he was a terrible husband, but then also relaying how she may have failed him in other ways. And so I just thought that was an interesting perspective, just because when you're hearing a protagonist point of view, I feel like oftentimes you're just hearing the like, I think I'm right, or I think this was, I mean, this is my perspective. And so it's the right perspective because it's my perspective. And I thought it was interesting how you would kind of see both sides of their, um, I mean, you would only see her side, but you could see her trying to figure out maybe how he was feeling or how she may have let him down in other ways. Um, but I think that overall he was a really good distant villain in my head because he, you didn't get his perspective, but he obviously was villainous and I was not rooting for him at all. But um, I just liked how we got to learn, even when like they do the conscious scan of him and she's like, mm -hmm. I figured out that my husband was lying to me. And then she mm -hmm. kind of like lists all the ways that maybe he wasn't telling the full truth about who he was. And he was having these little lies about like not liking green beans. It's like such a small thing to add into this consciousness mm -hmm. scan. But I still thought it was like such an interesting thing for the author to write about because it's so small. And yet it's like, why did you lie about the green beans? I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's so interesting and and of course like towards the end with the 12 others i thought that was so interesting like what does it mean that 13 is the one that ended up working out um so i don't i don't know i thought that he was a, a villain for me absolutely but i do like that he was held away from us that we only got to learn about him through someone who used to love him and no longer loves him and then another you know another person who wants to love him so bad because that's what she was made to be for him so i thought it was yeah yeah i definitely agree with both of you about nathan kind of being a distant character and i saw a comment that was like i don't know if i think of let me see if i can find it is that nathan being the villain all right here they're saying that they don't know if they they don't interpret nathan as a villain and I think this is an interesting point of view because when I was reading this, the first time we learned about like 
how they could ever work together was the scene where he gave her you know his number of however it happened i don't know who exchanged his number but when she was on a date with that guy right and so we see him at that time as somebody who's like charismatic and she's like kind of like oh he figured this thing out and now we're going to have this date and i didn't expect to fall in love with him and now we're married or whatever and then over time we see through Evelyn's mind how their relationship kind of fell apart and how they just weren't compatible. And I think it's interesting because Evelyn is such an unlikable character for her to, at the same time while she's like, he was a terrible husband, to also admit where she went wrong. You know what I mean? Because you typically just expect someone to be like, well, like Noelle said, well, I did nothing wrong. I'm the victim or wherever it was in the relationship, you know? That was definitely really interesting to see that she was very obvious, especially when they were creating Nathan's clone and she like made sure he wasn't gonna have any holes for her rather than redirecting and being like well this is my chance to create my perfect husband you know um, somebody said they were hoping the dead husband would be a clone oh. I don't know how that would have gone you know what I was hoping which I'll get into in a little bit I was hoping that Martine was somehow the real daughter of Evelyn's family. Did you get an also cult to say thing? I had a lot of theories. I also had a theory that Evelyn was a clone. Yes. So I was ready for like some, I was ready for some real shocking twists, but I liked the twist yeah. that we got that I wasn't expecting, which is like the garden of, of mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, a few chapters from Nathan. What do you guys think a few chapters from Nathan's perspective would have done to the story, though? I think exactly what this comment is saying, just like explaining the bodies in the backyard, like just getting a perspective of like either him going through the process of doing that or like you know, maybe after the fact, did he ever feel guilt? Did he ever feel remorse over the garden that he had made? Was it something that he wished he could have found another way to get rid of the bodies. Like it would have been really interesting. Although I do like that the perspective was mainly Evelyn. It would have been really cool to just, just pick his brain on that one portion. Cause that I thought the garden is so interesting to me and to have known if there was any guilt or any sadness or anything would have been so interesting. Mm -hmm. I think Bree's Bree has a good point, yeah. but it would make the book longer. And so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, absolutely not. Let's end where we were and move on. <laughs> I definitely think I would have been curious if we had got a Nathan perspective. I wanted to see him in action because when Evelyn was talking about Nathan and his ability to create Martine, she was like, how did he figure this thing out? How did he make her? able to have a child, all of this. I'm like, was this man actually smart? Because like, <laughs> so many mistakes were made that he did this one thing that Evelyn couldn't or couldn't figure out. So it's like, I would have loved to see just like his perspective on how he did the things that Evelyn, because they were both in the same field, you know what I mean? So that's my only interest because I didn't like him. And I also felt like he was kind of irrelevant at the end of the day but we'll get into that. <laughs> oh yeah, the ending was definitely something. Oh, here's a question. Wow, such a interesting question. Okay, what do you think about spending humanity and human emotions and processing to a clone? Oh. Yeah, this is a good point because they kept talking about Evelyn kept talking about Martine's rights as a clone, and that was something that I wanted to bring up at some point. So this is perfect. What did you guys think about that whole, the part where they were in the car? So to give a little summary for anyone who may have forgotten, there was a scene in the book where Evelyn and Martine were in the car after they had left the hospital when Martine went for a checkup. And Evelyn was asking Martine about how she knew that she wanted to carry a child, like it was her choice rather than something that was programming to her. Because to Evelyn, it's like, as a clone, you have no right. You know what I mean? That's what she was having a fight with Martine about. So what do you guys think about that whole thing? 
I think this book took a really unique take on clones because like a lot of times and like the realistic nature of clones is that they are born, not like created to be like the same age as the person they were cloned from. So it's like, it's such a different perspective having to think about it that way because them not having um, been like raised and grown up and had, you know, the life influence that way. Um, I don't know. I like how I like how the book did things, and I think my favorite thing about clone books is just the idea of a clone gaining more autonomy throughout the story. Like that's the best thing that I think most clone books I've ever read do is when um, you create this thing and you expect it to be a certain way and you designed it to be a certain way, and then no matter what you do with it. Um, you have to then have these ethical conversations about mm -hmm. the rights of the clone and then um, they somehow end up having more and more human traits as the book goes on. I'm trying to think of my, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I think this question is so excellent. Why do we think about extending humanity and human emotions and processing processing to a clone? Like that's so interesting. And, and just also just like to Evelyn, she's in the lab and she's like, these are just pe these are just clones that I'm making to get a job done and then they're gone. So to me, I don't really need to give them a lot of like rights because they're doing their job and then it's done and I don't have to worry about them mm -hmm. after them. And it's really to her, it feels more like here's my scientific experiment. I have to do this and then here's the goal and then it's done. But for this, like Martine was able to break through a mold of being able to have a child, which like that, that starts to confuse things and confuse her on like what, how she views a clone and what a clone can be. And, you know, she even says at one point, like I started to feel proud of Martine like that was really strange for me to feel pride over her and and to see her growing and kind of um pushing against her you know who she was supposed to be and so I agree with Kayla I don't know if I really have an answer I just think it's so fascinating to be able to because I understand like from a scientific perspective she's like this is my experiment and this is its job and now it's done mm -hmm. and then somewhat like something broke her experiment so how does she deal with these emotions and you know I think, you know, at the end, like just you can see Evelyn's growth to me as a character to see how it all ends up and like what she mm -hmm. fights for to make sure that Martine ends up with this semblance of a life that will make her happy. Yeah, I definitely feel similarly because I don't think there's one clear cut answer. Going back to the book I mentioned earlier, um, House of Scorpion, that book follows a young boy who is the clone of a drug lord. I think, yeah, yeah. So it follows this young boy who's a clone of a drug lord. And the man who he's a clone of is like a hundred and something. And this boy is a child. So going back to what Kayla said earlier about like, you know, they're like born and they're like younger and then they grow up. And so that's basically what happens in House of Scorpion. And we follow this kid from like childhood to when he's a teenager to when he's an adult. And I'm not gonna spoil, but in that book, there's a reason why these clones are created and why this man is hundreds of years old. I'm sure we can figure it out together, but I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> and so in that book, it's really interesting because I felt like what this book did and what that book did, again, to go back to what Lala said, was show how even though we enter with this idea, or you enter this book with the characters being like, well, clones have no rights. As they progress and as they grow, they're obviously going to start creating their own personalities and creating their own lifestyles and things like that. So it was really interesting also to see the friendship between the two women form as time went on. That was really surprising and really amusing to see. So yeah, I hope that answers your question because we didn't have one. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. I see other people have the same. Another thing is that my children are making. Yeah, okay, I kind of expected that would happen. And it didn't. I was like, are we going to have a fight at any point? Like, I just want you guys to fight. <laughs> okay. 
plot hole. This part. This part, the entire time I was reading this book, this part was bothering me so much. I was like, where did he make these clothes? Like, in the kitchen? Where? Especially with how long the clones take. Like, I thought maybe maybe if it was, like, a two-day process, you could get, with, get away with it. But mm -hmm. we go through the process with her, and I'm just like, how did he do this? Like, 13 times, how did he do this without her knowing anything about what was going on? Exactly. And not even just that. Like, he made 13 clones. So, how, like, Evelyn just, like, goes home and eats and goes to bed. Like, she, how did she not notice? The thirteen how did no neighbors notice him burying bodies? Like you know, so many things, so many questions. So many questions. <laughs> I'm such a terrible reader because like I literally don't care. Like, <laughs> I'm like let's be an let's be analytical about the science here and I'm like, I don't care, it was so fun. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care that the cloning didn't make sense. I didn't care that I, we don't we literally no idea what year this is even set or what technology looks like elsewhere. Mm -hmm. I don't care. I don't care. All of the fossils, give me the fossils. <laughs> I love that for you because I was like, what is okay? This is one thing after I finished this book. This is the thing that made me so not like mad, but I was like, what? Yeah, remember in the beginning when she was at her award ceremony, there was that lady that was like, oh, we'll grab lunch or something. They never grabbed lunch. <laughs> they, they never oh grabbed God. coffee. There was a lady that was asking where Nathan was. And they just never hung out. I was like, are you kidding me? When I finished, that was the one thing. And I was like, I was like, are you kidding me? What happened? What happened to the lunch? What happened to the lunch? That's what I was. <laughs> I was I was very attached to that lunch happening. Okay. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> okay. This comment. Oh, uh, I think Nathan just couldn't let his wife be more successful than he was. That's why he's too smart and not. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That I felt like that was super clear. From the fact that Evelyn, from the beginning, because Evelyn was the one winning the award, and she kept talking about how um, it was like something that they had started, and then it didn't work out, and then she was talking about how it's his name, like his last name, that will be on this award, rather than hers, and I just thought that was like so interesting, but yeah, I was super clear, and that's why I'm like, how smart was this man? <laughs> I because think like the not, sorry go on. The, no, just like the best part about the book to me is the theme of like everybody I think somebody mentioned it in a comment earlier but like um everybody needs to be or everyone is conditioned like everyone needs to change like nobody is uh, just like um, the clone, you know, breaks out of what's her expectations. Mm -hmm. Everyone needs to do the same thing. Like there are certain ways that she's living her life that maybe isn't best for her, and she needs to break out of that. And Nathan has certain expectations of things, and he isn't living, you know, the best way he could, and he needs to break out of that. And like, I I love that that all came full circle, and there were so many things that. Um, played off of each other. It was like we're having this conversation about how Martine needs to, or humanity is, you know, it's she's breaking through this stuff, but so does like everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. So I was waiting for Sydney to get here because we did read this together. And the whole time we were both saying the exact same thing. We were like, this is ridiculous. Evelyn, what are you doing? Martine, how is Martine? harder than everyone else and you keep telling her she's the clone so that's why this martine has to be real because why is she having so many more interesting ideas than everyone else in this book but somehow she gave it one star and i was like i love it here <laughs> <laughs> i love this um okay so other people noticed it wasn't just you i've never grabbed lunch <laughs> That bothered me. I was so upset. Like I turned the last page and I was like, epilogue. 
Oh my god. Just they go to lunch in the open. Something that would something nothing nothing at all so yeah it hurts but hello cindy uh okay did all 13 clothes survive for more than a day i don't remember does anyone remember because i don't remember i don't think they survived very long but i'm not sure okay danny was trying to oh that's interesting yeah everyone's parallel to her father like I thought that whole like her relationship with her parents was really interesting and also was why I thought she was a clone because her mom kept like teaching her how to step like how to walk quietly mm. do you guys remember that like mm. the stepping on the like what's it called wood mm-hmm. <laughs> on the floor on the stairs like by the wall yeah right? the the yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so like she was a very loud child because that's normal i think like naturally just they make a lot of noise so like why does she have to especially teach her but i think it's because she just had a really really tense relationship with her parents but i don't know what you guys what your takes on that is about her being a clone when she was like no about her know her parents and like their relationship and then also about her mom basically being the one who because i know her mom killed the dad that was pretty clear from the start i was like mm-hmm. her mom's definitely the one who got rid of this man so mm-hmm. but did you enjoy seeing the backstory of like her parents and like their relationship did you find it interesting for sure, I think um, I think that comment lays it out perfectly. Um, I know that some people won't like the ending of the book because, um, like, again, the reason I like it is because it comes full circle and like, no, I'm not happy mm-hmm. for all the characters by the end of the book. And yes, like Nathan mm-hmm. did essentially get like what he wanted out of things, but mm-hmm. I think it just shows like yet another reflection of um, like the things she experienced as a child and that abuse um continues and it just sometimes shows up in different ways and you don't always recognize it for what it is okay. yeah. i definitely do see that i think this is an interesting comment because that's something i thought about too because if we were to think about the fact that evelyn is like her father and martine is now in the situation where she's just essentially trapped at home taking care of the child and there's a child it just gave like massive parallels to her childhood but like isn't she now in the exact same setting that she grew up in and now she has to probably teach this child the same type of things that she was taught as a child you know what i mean Mm -hmm. i like how she tried to like take one step away from her childhood where she was like well i give her more than an hour and I was like, well, it's still like it's still the same thing. So um, I thought that the learning the whole backstory around her parents and everything, I thought when the story started, I was like, oh, sci-fi and then a murder and then also learning about childhood. I wonder if this is going to start getting confusing, but I actually think that it added so much to the story. And I felt like I knew Evelyn a lot more than just being this person in a lab who was getting clones out. And then there was a murder that she had to take care of. I felt like it was really interesting and exactly what Kayla said, like, having it come full circle even if you don't like you can appreciate that it's a full circle and that that it's interesting writing even if you don't like the full circle like even if Mm -hmm. at the end it's not a happy ending and that it's upsetting And, and i agree like having you know the martine basically becomes like her perfect partner it, it wasn't Nathan's perfect partner, kind of, and then she pushes against him, but she kind of gets a perfect partner in a, you have to be my lab assistant and you have to do what I say mm-hmm. because that's the only way you'll be able to be here with your daughter. And that was scary. And I thought it was a really interesting ending and it, it definitely left me feeling very uneasy where I was like, whoa, not what I was expecting. My best friend, I was actually talking to my best friend about it yesterday. Mm -hmm. I hadn't finished it yet. And she's like, well, where's it going? Like, what's going to happen? And I was like, I literally have no idea. And I did not see that part of the ending coming. So Mm -hmm. I thought it was really, really interesting to see how it all went around. That's what I love about Sarah Gailey is they don't like, they don't just like wrap things up nicely um things are just like 
you don't end the book thinking like, oh, I feel so good about where these characters are going in life. It just ends and you're like, wow, fuck. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah, I definitely think it was so interesting how Evelyn is literally her father now. Except I think because she notices all the things that happen with her parents, she's having to figure out how to avoid those things while at the same time benefiting from it career-wise. That's the thing that I felt like was really interesting, especially because her last assistant left. So she was kind of like hanging and being like, what am I going to do next? What's going on? And she just never, I thought it was so interesting how she was never able to keep an assistant for longer than like six weeks. And it made me wonder like, how miserable is it to work for this woman? And now Martine's going to do it forever. Mm-hmm. So, sad moment. Well, I do think overall this is a mystery. Yeah, I agree. Totally agree. Yeah, I don't think it felt like a thriller at all. Yeah, I think one of your um, one of your questions that you were going to pose was mm-hmm. like, um, what do you look for in a thriller? Mm-hmm. I think, um, and like, did yeah. it give you everything you want? I wouldn't refer to this as a thriller or a mystery. Um, and I feel like sometimes it actually like gets, maybe gets in the hands of the wrong person. Um, I feel like this is a bit more for like a, just a more niche audience. Um, mm-hmm. I obviously love all the press that it's getting and everyone who is reading it because the author, you know, is more and more successful, but uh, it, it sucks when like people expect something different from a book too. So I would call this like a domestic sci-fi. I think Mm -hmm. I had to label it. Yeah, I definitely think that sometimes when you see a book and people are like, this is a thriller, this is a horror, this is a blank, and you go into it thinking that that's what you're going to get, sometimes it can result in you not enjoying the book because it's not something that you thought you were going into, which ends up being like a lower rating for the author or whatever, but at the same time, it's more publicity for the author's book, which gets it into other people's hands. Because how I found out about this book was because Joel kept talking about it on his story. And I was like, well, what is this? Let me look it up. So, and I wouldn't have seen that if, or I wouldn't have been that interested if it was like, oh, this is a domestic sci-fi about this. But I heard Thriller and I ran with it. I was like, cool. (laughs) I'll read that. (laughs) Yeah. This is an interesting take, too. I didn't think about that. That's interesting. Okay, let's talk about what you think each character's motivations were. Because that was difficult for me to pinpoint. It's what everybody was going to, because it was obvious what Evelyn and Nathan were gaining. Or what Nathan thought he was going to gain, which he did eventually in the end, if you really think about it, which I know people thought, like, mentioned how he gets like the best of both worlds now. It's funny, this isn't something that I really, I really think about when I'm reading books. Um, Mm -hmm. It wasn't until I saw, I think it was Cindy's review earlier today that was like, what were these characters' motivations? And I was like, I don't know. (laughs) I I don't know. I um, I think my favorite character was, um, what was the lab assistant's name? Saeed. Saeed, is that how you pronounce that? Mm -hmm. Um, Because I was listening to the audiobook too. And that's how it was pronounced in the audiobook. Okay. I did listen to the audiobook as well for some reason. <laughs> I can't remember that. Um, <laughs> but you read it I, a while ago. I think a, an interesting part of that is that like, she wants to understand his motivations mm-hmm. um, because he helped Nathan with like the cloning process and learning about his motivations mm-hmm. um, was p- a part that was interesting to me was like why he mm-hmm. would have created um, Martine and um, let me come back to this thought. (laughs) (laughs) It's funny that you mentioned Cindy while you're thinking about that because the reason why this question is here is because when we were reading it we kept going back and forth being like why are they doing this? Like what is the point? Why are they? But I was like no. But I'll ask because that's interesting. <laughs> like, nobody gains anything 
but also everybody gained something because when you think about it nathan thought he had you know created the perfect life for himself evelyn ends up having like a assistant and a subject martine gets to hold on to her child which is something that she said she felt proud having and that was the one thing that was hers Said ends up getting um the letters of recommendations and a, an entryway into his future career so like everybody gained something even though it wasn't like explicitly said you know what i mean that's why i think that's like so interesting and this is also a good comment because we're talking about the backyard now <laughs> and what we think about the child and the backyard and the whole scene of getting that other body cleaning it up and then trying to frame clone nathan that was a lot I was explaining it to my best friend as I was saying, and she was like so excited to hear about it. Like she like she doesn't usually get like that when I'm explaining a story. I think she's more just like, "All right, get it out." Like I'm glad you you know you want to talk to someone about it, but I don't know what you're saying. But with this one, she's like, "And then what happened? And then what happened? What that what happened?" And when I was explaining Nathan and the um, clones in the backyard, she like gasped. She was like, "Oh my god!" And I felt like such a good storyteller, even though it was definitely not my story to tell. So it was fun watching her reaction, but. Um, I thought the garden was so interesting. And I think that one of the reasons why I was waiting for Evelyn to switch to, to being a clone, like in my head, that was also how I thought it was going to end was just like how twisty it almost got. Like I was able to follow it throughout, but it was interesting seeing like, well, Nathan died. So now let's make a clone Nathan. And now we have a clone of this. And then what happens to clone Nathan? If clone Nathan dies, can you make another clone from a clone you already have? Or do you need the original tissue? Like just going around in circles about who would take the fall and like how this, you know, someone, I think even Evelyn says it where she's talking about the garden in the back backyard. And she's like, why did no one trip over this? Like he didn't even dig yeah. deep deep graves like why how did he get away with this like how did he do this 12 times like she's all confused by it so um yeah i i thought the graveyard was excellent and I, i'm so surprised someone saw it coming because i didn't see that coming at all maybe i just like it rolled over my head they were so smart for catching it because i was not expecting when she calls and she's like you need to come here i can't explain it I was like, what could it be? Nathan must be dead. And then yeah. it's all these clones. I was shocked. I thought it was so cool. Yeah, that was mm -hmm. definitely my favorite twist. I think um, there's a lot of like interesting commentary that isn't explained to you, which is what I love about short books, is that it doesn't spell things out for you and it just leaves you with a lot of things to think about after. I think that's a great point about um, like how did nobody catch on and, and this it, we keep coming back to it. And I think it's just such an interesting commentary on like men and the terrible things that they do and how easily this certain type of man in this certain field and this certain lifestyle just so easily can get away with everything that he wants. And um, all of these other people are just like left behind and there's no real repercussions a lot of times and so like we got that we got that revenge moment because like obviously he died um but then but then somehow like his vision for his future like still perseveres a little bit and like that it hurts but it's like reality and it's really gross and it's a, just it's such an interesting thing to get to read mm -hmm. I definitely did not see the grave scene at all. Like when Martine called, I was like, oh my God, did she kill him again? Like we don't have that much left in this book. So I thought, what I thought was gonna happen was that Martine had maybe killed um, Nathan again and she was going for Evelyn next and then she was gonna take over Evelyn's life and just take over everything. And, Cause she kept reading all those textbooks and she kept learning about how to do things and then when they were like breaking not breaking bones when they were trying to make sure that the clone nathan matched nathan in every way to like make sure whatever scars he had and things like that she was enjoying it a little too much for somebody who wasn't a suspect so i was like is she gonna take over everyone's life after this because nobody knew she could literally just be evelyn so i thought that was what was gonna happen 
and I liked the route it took instead. And I thought it was like really interesting, especially when it came to Evelyn telling Martine to leave the baby. I was like, this is cruel. I just couldn't take it. I was like, please don't leave that child. <laughs> like, not with Nathan the clone. Yeah, was like, that was rough. Yeah, I was like, I hope so. I was like really happy when they got to, you know, be together. Because that was the one thing Martine cared about having, you know, like being able to take care of her child. So I was pleasantly surprised at how that went. Um, this is going to be my questions. What were some of your like other favorite parts of the book? Like some things that maybe you haven't mentioned yet that you really enjoyed or you feel like maybe it was like a little thing that maybe other people didn't notice that you really noticed and loved. It could be about the writing style too, which I know Lala's touched mm -hmm. on a lot. I think I just liked the conversations about like different traits and um, the traits that Nathan was looking for in in his future partner and how um, Evelyn possessed all of these qualities, but he wasn't happy with her and wanted someone who was more complacent and more docile. And, um, and then also getting to hear from Evelyn about the traits that Martine possessed and um, her expectations of the clone. I think expectations is an interesting thing that I enjoyed because like what Nathan expected from his wife and expected from the clones and then what Evelyn ex expected the clone to be like and how mm -hmm. she um, didn't think Martine would be capable of certain things and put a lot of her, like when she was assuming the traits that Nathan would have put from her into Martine and the things she was wrong about um, and what Nathan really wanted out of a partner. It was, it's just such an interesting thing to get to read about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the definitely at the beginning, as I when I was talking about the consciousness scan and how she started to discover things about Nathan that she didn't know, but that Martine knew and and Martine knew a lot about Evelyn that like, you know, to I think to him, to Nathan, he was like, oh, you're just a vessel that I can tell everything to. Whereas Evelyn was like, oh, our marriage is sacred. Like we, we're going to keep it between us. He was like, oh, no, I'm going to tell um, Martine everything. And I just really liked that idea of like, because cloning is one thing. I could accept that part of it, but I could not wrap my head around how they inherited personality traits and mm -hmm. the way they talked and like who they became. And towards the end when, when they're making Nathan, or I guess towards the middle, how Evelyn was saying that she was, he was still soft plastic enough to like push her thumbprint into or fingerprint into to like make him who he was. I just thought that was so fascinating. And that like, right when he comes awake, like he's not talking quite right. And she like notes, Oh, that's something we're going to have to work on so that his like cadence matches him more. Um, so I just loved kind of toying with that idea in my head of like, it's one thing to, you know, for a clone to be conscious on their own as their own being. And, and I think they grow into that. Like Martine is a good example of that where like she is given this like role she's supposed to play and she starts to push against that. But I think making the clone at first and having to like use a brain scan or, you know, to, to make them who you want them to be and make sure, I know that Evelyn says it where it says like, you want them to be able to mirror the person, the, the real person but not enough to challenge the real person. And I think that Martine that, you know, had started to challenge Evelyn in a way that she was, she was on unex what was unexpected and was uncomfortable for her. And I thought that was really great. Yeah. I think my favorite parts of the book are kind of in relation to this comment because what I loved was seeing um, Evelyn get really shocked whenever Martine would get angry or whenever Martine would be like, well, why? And she'd be like, why are you asking me why? Because I said so. <laughs> and there was like tension between them because of that. And I really loved that because one of the ideas that Clove was like, we're going to it, like we have been talking about, is that clones don't have any drives, they don't have any like free will of their own. And I think this book is does such a good job of showing the progression because we follow like over months. They were working on Nathan's clone for months to see how. Martine became a very different person from who Evelyn was. I mean, she was created to be a very different person in the first place. But as she like continues to grow and to be around people, it becomes like, okay, well, her nature was to just be this 
submissive clone that just does whatever people are telling her. But then through human interaction and through her own thoughts and learning and reading all those books she read, she realized like what type of person she was, which is weird to say. But it was just so interesting to see that. And it makes me question what's going to happen to the child so that's something that they are not prepared for. Like, how will that child be raised? And what will they be like? So, yeah, that's true. Oh, yeah, also true. Also true and also interesting. But I think this book is not one where when you read it, you should ask yourself so many questions, which I'm now realizing, because you're just going to drive yourself up the wall if you're like okay but what about this okay but what about that like when i was reading this and it's gonna sound like you guys are gonna be concerned but i was like where did she go to college let's pretend <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was like where's the degree from i want to know <laughs> like i was just so curious because of the whole like discussion of her research, I was like, this is interesting, especially like being a grad student. I'm like, okay, what was the research process for what she just won an award for? <laughs> I was I like, okay, so, <laughs> I was like, how are we analyzing the data? So I just got two in my head reading this, and I was like, let me step back and remember this is fiction, <laughs> and let's let's not do this. <laughs> But By the end, I was definitely like, did Martine ever find out how to sleep after or before 9.30? I was just like, that fucked you? me up so much. <laughs> when she was like, I can't go to sleep. And she was like, just go to sleep. And she was like, no, I like literally can't. I was like, oh. I was like, this guy fucked her up that bad. Like, we learned like little things. It was like, oh, she's just going to be nicer than Evelyn. She's just going to be a little more submissive than Evelyn. But then it was like, no, she like, he literally put in her thing when she can relax. And then like, she can't sit down and just chill out. I was like, Nathan can get fucked. Yeah. <laughs> and I think also too, this, and I don't know if anyone, I'm pretty sure other people thought about this too, because it's kind of been brought up. But the idea that a man created Martine and Martine's character symbolizing what a lot of men in real life are always discussing about the perfect woman. I just felt like that was such an interesting way that this author put that into the book. You know, because she's supposed to like be awake and cooking and ready and like not ask questions and not say anything and just be like prim and proper and stand in there. And I think it's really interesting to to see that because of how women are treated in society and what the expectations are. Mm -hmm. So and maybe that's why she was able to have a child. Maybe that's why. Maybe that's why Nathan did that and Evelyn couldn't or Evelyn didn't think about going that route. So I don't know, but I was thinking about that. <laughs> mm, interesting. Because mm, didn't not want a child? <laughs> interesting. I'm so, worried about the yeah. people who read this who like love world building so much. Because they're just going to and be like, this should have been 600 pages. Like we could have learned about the world around them. We could have learned where technology is elsewhere in the world. We could have learned mm -hmm. like, so much and the legality of all of these things and like what would have happened if they got caught and what that would have meant um yeah. like i see how it could go there and i see why people would love that mm -hmm. but i think i would have hated the book in that case yeah yeah i think it definitely alluded to the legalities but i like that a lot of things were left out because it leaves me to put my emotions into the book and be like okay hmm, interesting but yeah I guess I know what my rating will be. It's probably going to be like a four star because Ooh. this is just kind of recently of how much more I loved the book. You know, I was like, this is absolutely ridiculous. But <laughs> we are now nearing the end of our live show. So if you guys have any final thoughts or anything that you want, Lala or Noel to kind of touch on, or if you guys actually have anything else that you want to say, any final thoughts and pieces before we end the live show. It was just the sleep for me. 
I just wanted her to sleep. I really wanted her to sleep. And I didn't like that if it was if it was 931, she just couldn't like or you know, like she was just she couldn't do it. I was so sad for her. Yeah. I just wanted the coffee. The, co the coffee? I wanted to sleep. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks for saying. Okay. Cool. I want to ask people like for recommendations. Oh, yeah. Guys, recommend some similar books to this for us. And do it quickly because my laptop's at 14%. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Well, people can also leave it in the comments below if they're watching this after the fact. I just like, I have really realized like just my love for clone books in the last like mm -hmm. year. So I would recommend like The Murders of Molly Southbourne. Um, mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. I, I recommend this to everyone all the time, but Bunny by Mona Awad. Oh, so good. It has some like similar vibes. It's not the mm -hmm. same. And then I really want to recommend Follow Me to Ground by Sue Rainsworth because it also has some similar some similar ideas. And if you like like the um, if you like the garden scene and how like weird that made you feel, there's some moments in here. Writing it down right now. <laughs> right. I feel like this is the perfect live show to have Mama on because I only had the book I read when I was like twelve. To talk about it. I can't tell you if it's any good now because I haven't read it since then. I've tried, but I've just been too scared to pick it up because I don't want to know. I'm like, if this is bad, I don't want to be crushed. So let me just mind my business. Um, okay. Oh, okay. So we love to see it. Oh, the writers are going to. Oh, okay. It's yeah. really short, like aggressively short. <laughs> it's a series, but that one's a series, actually. Wow. Okay, I will definitely be checking that out because I feel the need to read more clone books. Okay, cool. Cool. I see no more, but if you are watching this after this is done, go ahead and leave some recommendations in the comments because I do want to read more clone books. Mm -hmm. But that is it for the live show. Thank you guys so much for coming and creating such a discussion. I didn't even know what was going to happen with this book when we talked about it because it's so short and so cute. I love the cover. <laughs> but <laughs> I do. I really love this cover. It's so, it's so nice. The colors are weird, but I think it works. Anyway, thank you so much for joining us in the comments. And thank you so much to Kayla and Noel for joining me for this live show. Um, the other Sarah Gailey book I DNF'd was Magic for Liars. I think that's what it's called. It's but like I softly DNF'd it. Yeah, it just wasn't the time. So maybe we'll go back. I didn't hate it, so we don't know. But anyways, um, thanks for coming. Thanks for joining me. Make sure you guys check the description below for Kayla and Noelle's channels and also Blake's. But yeah, that's about it. I will see you all for the Strange the Dreamer live show. Goodbye. Bye.